You're listening to Nothing's Off the Table, the podcast where no subject is too taboo to discuss. Now, please welcome your hosts, Andy Barker and Drew Del Pre. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Nothing's Off the Table, your Friday night source of uh, pseudo entertainment. But uh, yeah, um, Shandrika, you look so different. Um, wow, I wasn't expecting this. Right. Oh, wait, that's not Shandrika. That's that's Brian Spencer. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you may look at it, at least um, our, our scheduled guest was courteous enough to call us, or at least email me and mm-hmm. let me know that she couldn't make it. And thank we reached out to, yes, thank you very much. And we reached out to Brian, and uh, he was more than willing to come on the show and put up with our crap tonight. So, Brian, welcome. Well, thank you. I'm always available if you need me. That's good to know. Uh, we, what are you doing later? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> A oh, good thing I'm a, I'm over an hour away from you, but yeah, that's all right. I got wheels. We were just, we were just talking about, um, you know, we, we we both have kids, and in a few years, you know, we'll we'll be empty nesters, and how we just can't wait to load up a truck, a fifth wheel, and just leave. Yes, and people are like, you know, does that include your wife? I said, I said, I said, I'm leaving. <laughs> that's everything. Everything is in the rear view. Yeah, gone. <laughs> So unfortunately, after you become an empty nester for about a year or so, you want those kids back oh, around. Man. I can. You go. You go through withdrawals. Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm. I'm good with uh, FaceTime. And then, and then they start handing off uh, the grandkids. <laughs> well, that G word. Sorry. I I hope that that's not for many many years to come. Right. Yeah, but it was just yesterday they were all in diapers, and look at them now. They're in middle school. This is true, and, and look at yeah. look at me now. I'm the one in diaper. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that. you know what? I, my cousin, uh, my cousins, a lot of my cousins work for the school district where I come from, and uh, I, I uh, see them every Labor Day. I was talking to one every every year. I always always ask her like, "How's this person and this person?" Because I keep forgetting. I keep asking about the same people because it's once mm. a year, right? And she keeps <laughs> telling. And then finally this year, she's like, "Lewis, they're dead." They died a long time ago. She's like, you have to understand, we are our parents now, okay? <laughs> it was just very sobering. Like, I was like, yeah, I guess, I guess. I guess you're right. Yeah, I am. When I was in school, the person I was asking about, my parents would have been my age, right? You know, and those people would have been a little older. So, yeah, I guess they haven't gone a while. Wow. Yeah, it was several years ago. My cousins was like, oh, yeah, we're the aunts and uncles now. And now we're changing over to that we're the grandparents. <laughs> great it's yeah it's uh it's a sobering reality is what it is but you know it's a fact of life um it's the one thing we're all not gonna escape and that's the the dreaded d word pushing up daisies if you will yeah time waits oh go ahead time waits for no man certainly does not or woman or whatever you Jesus, do I even want to go down this road tonight? Not it's really. only two, man or woman. That's oh, it. God. That's all you need to say. That's yeah. right. That's the right. Rest isn't, the, the, the rest doesn't exist. <laughs> the rest of I, mental I say, illness of men and women. Amen. Yeah. Wow, man. I, I, I don't have any sound bites for that, but that's great. That's perfect. I got one. Do it. Let's I hear like it. I love people too, but come on, Paul. <laughs> no, man, that's all I got. <laughs> Vince, I love you. That's my favorite. That's horrible. I don't even know what to say to that. But uh, so, Brian, uh, for those that don't know, uh, Brian is a former Missouri state representative and uh, served served our area very well and very proudly. Um, with that being said, I have to ask, what is your take on all of this circus buffoonery going on in our legal system? Uh, are we talking our, our state house or federal or what are we? which, which category would you like? <laughs> Uh, let's go federal because not too many people are going to be interested in the Missouri State House drama, <clears throat> except for locals. Well, I mean, federal. I think we have a a hostile deconstruction of our republic to a socialist communist system. That's what I think we have going on now. And if you uh, want a good entertainment. Um, movie to watch i suggest you watch on rumble tv because that's the only place that's going to allow it to be shown a show called the greatest show on earth and if you want to know what's going on uh behind the scenes 
If you want to know why you're being lied to in the news media and other forms, um, all you got to do is watch this little sh little show. It's about an hour and 30 minutes long. It's, it's uh, eye-opening, and then you'll be like, I get it now. I see what's happening and why it's happening. Mm. Can you give us a little taste? <laughs> the cliff notes. <laughs> yeah, a little taste. Well, you know, uh, back when Trump was first running for president, um, there were 17 people on the stage, and Jed Bush said, who are your supporters? Who is supporting you in this run for president? And pres uh, then candidate Trump said, I have 2,000 generals supporting me in my run for president. Trump was selected to run for, for office for a hmm. certain reason. Hmm. Very interesting. So is, is Rumble TV, is that a free or is that a paid? It's platform? a free. Yeah. So okay. if, you, if you have a smart TV, you just go and you uh, download uh, that app and it, it kind of looks like YouTube, uh, mm -hmm. but they don't they don't take anything off the table just like this show does exactly. and they just put it out there and it's uh by good lion tv um and that's not lying it's lion <laughs> as in the uh the beast the the king of the king of the jungle Ram. so that's good good lion tv the show's called the greatest show on earth and once you watch it you'd be like wow that was interesting i see it now well, I know what I'm watching tonight. I wrote it down so I won't won't forget. So let me let me throw this out there to uh to all of us um since we're talking um you know the the conspiracy the conspiracy theory stuff. So lately I've been um going down the books of ancient uh cultures and and secret societies. Uh and uh the one book I got came you know, Brian you'll love this. It came with a uh came with a warning that said um you know, you, you should have strong beliefs before you start researching things like this, because you can end up going down rabbit holes that will just, you know, they'll just drive you crazy. You know, you can find a conspiracy behind every rock. You know, if you're one of the people that truly believes anything is possible, then, you know, you should firm your beliefs before you continue reading. And so it's, course, only, oh, it's only a conspiracy if it's not true. No, I agree. So, so, um, so we, I, I was talking about, um, they went, this book went through the Sumerian culture, right? Which is the oldest culture we have that, that, that writing started, right? They have remains from previous cultures, but there was no writing or recording. The Sumerians are actually the first culture to record, um, regularly. And, uh, basically from Sumerian texts, it's the entire story of Genesis. They have from the, the entire story. Exactly. Except instead of God, it was a dragon. And then as you start going through the Bible and through these ancient texts and you start seeing all these similarities and all these stuff that they talk about and all the constellation in the star work, um, it's, a, it's pretty fascinating um, the amount of history and culture and um, I, I, guess, uh, I guess hidden things you can find in, in these societies. Yeah. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, oh, like where are we going? Like, okay, where are we going from politics to? I'm so, I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't link it up from 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 past history to politics. But uh, well, anyway, so the more I went down these roads, the more I realized, and uh, and I, I I missed this key portion of it. Um, I had I had a long conversation earlier, and they're starting to blend together. Um, but uh, um, what I, what I look at is I start to look around. And I think you know none of, none of this is really real. Right. I'm not getting I'm not getting explanations or facts or answers from anyone. You know, I, I hear people talk about, you know, well, informed voters know this and informed. OK, what's an informed voter? Everything's classified. I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea. Well, when you watch this uh, show, the greatest show on Earth on Rumble TV by Lion TV, um, they will give you actual documents that proves every point that they make and and that what that makes makes it perfect sense and all the all the stuff you see on tv about biden you know we have he's an actor and that kind of stuff um yeah they have biden as uh they have a date of biden's death 
already and 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 who's playing biden and there's actually two people playing biden and nobody will ever believe this but when they when they show it to you and they give you proof um it's 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 alarming so you're saying so you're biden, like, oh good you're saying biden's dead according to this uh movie they're saying wow. biden's dead and when you look at some of the facebook posts from the conspiracy series Here's Biden and his earlobes are attached. Yeah. Here's Biden and his earlobes are different. Here's Biden looking on this day. And there's two different Bidens that are actually portraying Biden. Mm. So, I, so I, I, uh, well, I was going to say like, like, so, so we talk about people being puppets and everything and here's in mm -hmm. here again. So, so being a, being a, a student of history, uh, I don't, what's new. What's new? What's the, what was different between Biden and Trump? Trump was going to declassify the Kennedy documents till he got in and got told, no, you're not. <laughs> there's no sovereign. And that's what I was going to get into. What, what's your thought on there's no sovereignty in America? There are some things that it doesn't matter who you elect and what the people want. They will not be done. And that this, and that the, the Department of Defense learned when Brexit occurred that they, they needed to start turning all these spy agencies inward, hence the creation of CISA. Which it now um, also is is uh, looking at cognitive structure, your pattern of thinking that that belongs in the internet as well. They're taking control of that now. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is so so. I mean, that's my whole life. That's been that way. My whole life, the the face has never been the the puppeteer. So I mean, they go through all kinds of things, and and you know, little tidbits, not to give away the the movie, but um, I'm going to ask Andy this question. Who does the Coast Guard report to? Well, I guess that depends on the day as much as they DHS. change. No, yeah. they got put under. No, I, I know. Or Homeland I'm Security. Saying. Homeland Security. So, so they, they've, yeah, they've had several masters through the years. That's why I made that comment. It's so they're, they're supposed to be assigned to Homeland Security in time yeah. of peace. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But right now, the, the, all the Coast Guards are at Navy bases. And they're taking their orders right now from the Navy bases. Interesting. And if you, Go ahead, please finish. So, so that, I mean, that, that's, that should give you a little inkling on, on a, that movie. And, and it's going to explain to you why these things are is because there is a, a war going on right now. And it's, and right now the general public is obliviated to it and they go back as far as, uh, 1950 is when this hostile takeover has started and they talk about the Stockholm syndrome and we've had years and years of mm -hmm. and generations of generations of brainwashing and you just can't switch the flip the switch to say here's the truth and expect them to believe it right so th things are allowed to be played out now um, and there are several actors in this play, uh, and they talk about the, the white hat people and the black hat peoples, and and they are separating the sheep from the goats, mm -hmm. and and that's what's going on now, and and we just don't see it. But when you watch this movie, I, I can't wait to uh, get a private message back, and you'll be like, "Holy cow, this makes sense." Well, uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, I have to go watch a movie, apparently. But no, uh, it uh, yeah. sounds fascinating. Um, it's but but again, like my my thing is though, like it's I I, I mean I'm I I didn't believe I didn't believe the I didn't believe uh, I didn't believe the second Bush was in charge. I didn't I don't believe Clinton. I, I believe Clinton. Um, uh, you read about books on Clinton, and and the in, most interesting thing about Clinton is he did nothing. And that's why he's great, right? He let Congress do everything. And if it worked out, he went, he, he, he basically got in front of the microphone and said, look what I did. And if it didn't work out, he went there and was like, well, look at those darn Republicans. Well, you know, but, but he, Bill, Bill was he never, busy. yeah, but nothing ever originated from the white house, right? Like he never was out in front of an issue really. I mean, he always let sort of it play out and then took credit or blame. Right. So. Um, well, I, w I wouldn't say that I didn't do anything in the office. I mean, you yeah. could just ask Monica if you know yeah. what I'm saying. You can't. George Stephanopoulos's book is really interesting on that. Um, and uh, but but then you look at like uh, you look at um, when Trump came in. Um, I, I I mean, 
the people that were in and out of that office doing whatever the hell they wanted, man. I mean, you have to just think the three letter agencies were running game on that guy's admin from day one. I mean, there were people, what Blagojevich lasted three days. You know, I mean, people, it was like a revolving door just to throw a, throw an operative in there. It, yeah. It's crazy because you, you going back to what you were saying about the different Bidens, if you will, it's, it's not all that far fetched. If you think about it, look at all the dictators and the leaders around the world. Saddam Hussein, number one, how many body doubles did that dude have? Many and very passive passable. Um, well, and it also, you know, Hillary has Hillary Clinton has disappeared from the public and all of a sudden she has come back within the last six months and she's younger, more vibrant than ever. Sure she is. So there's a lot of actors out there right now. Have, have you guys ever heard, have you guys ever heard Je Jesse Ventura Jesse talk about Ventura. the governorship? The CIA Are you talking is? about the, the governor of the great state of yeah. Minnesota? No, no, I, I, yeah, but have you ever, but seriously, have you ever heard him talk about the CIA? No. He said he as talks he about like, so much. It's like, it's almost. Well, like he said as soon as he was elected governor, he was pulled inside by his CIA uh, governor staff, and he said every governor has a CIA. On I did staff. hear that. Yeah, yeah, I did hear that. I was told this is you know these are I'll, I'll be with you. I'm on staff. You don't have a choice, and you know let's get to work, governor. Let's do good things. And if you want something interesting on uh, on the last time you've seen the real players, uh, when uh, George, uh, when Daddy George Bush passed away. You had the Clintons, you had the Bush, you had the Obamas, and you had the Trumps all sitting on the fr front row of the funeral. Everybody was handed an envelope except for Donald Trump. And when they opened that up during the funeral, every one of their demeanors have changed. And the only person that didn't get an envelope was Trump. What do you speculate was in there? Uh, basically, it's like the gig's up with you game over hmm. that's that's my speculation is that hmm. why they well they went into overdrive <laughs> have they i i mean i think so i mean i think i i think you're seeing a a, a real large push here for chaos uh, here's what i think i think they're doing the cloud pivot strategy right pushing it to chaos so that we beg for dictatorship right somebody somebody stop the chaos please here's more power right where we have no we have no no crime bail that's exploded Right. No, 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 um, no money bail. You know, people are coming, yeah. the border millions coming through millions. It's, it's an invasion. It's not, it's not confirmed. Immigration. Well, well what I think is interesting is people, people don't, you know, people are so funny, right? There's no human is illegal. Correct. 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 And no adult military age male can seek asylum. They stay and revolution. <laughs> so, you know, any military age male claiming asylum, no, no, because your country sucks. You stay, you form a group and you fight, you know, you don't, you don't come over here and go, it sucks there. I need help. Well, I mean, I was watching Fox business and they were talking about the number of Chinese male yeah, yeah. of fighting age that are crossing the border has taken over yeah. the amount above the Hispanics coming from Central America. Yeah. Who, who cares what nationality, if you're an adult age male, you don't get to come here. It's it, unless you have a skill we need. And if you don't have a skill we need, there's no asylum for adult. In fact, you know, the UN quietly changed its policy and I'm mad as hell. I'm mad as hell, Brian, because I knew when I read it the first time I need to print this because it's going to change and it's certainly changed and I can't find it anymore. If I knew how to use Google time machine, I would, but, um, the UN policy on, on asylum seeking used to say that asylum seekers must apply in the nearest stable country. And that's, and the, and that's, that's still the same. No, they changed it. It is now only recommended or encouraged. Mm. But, but, but then again, I don't know why we belong to the UN whenever we, we well, pay the majority of the dollars just for them I, to bash I, I, us. I'm with you, exactly. Brian, but here was my question for Steve Ducey to ask Kareem Jean-Pierre. Are you saying Mexico's an unstable country? I mean, I am, but I'm a, I'm a citizen, right? Uh, is that what the White House is saying? Is, 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 is the reason Biden accepting these asylum seekers because Mexico is unstable? Because that's the UN policy. I would ask her because you know she can't say it. She's not going to say anything. Never. It's uh, you know, I was I'd watching um, 
I was watching a uh, interview of the Mexican president the other day, and and he was basically basically calling a Biden uh, Biden a clown and saying they will never stop the flow of people into this country. They're encouraging it, highly encouraging it. Well, it empties out their jails. Well, who? It empties out Mexico's jails. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. But no, they're they're not doing. It's not only that, but they're not doing anything to stop other you know nationalities from coming through i was also watching a little tidbit the other day on the news and they were they had reporters down at the border and it was astounding the the number of military age males with fresh military haircuts wearing boots oh and a lot of chinese men yeah it's, it's very uh very interesting Things, what was the uh, 80s songs that said, uh, that was about things that make you go, hmm. Yes. There's a lot of that. Oh, that, was, that was a good song. Anyway. I was just yeah. thinking, well, Biden is pushing for for light rail. <laughs> I guess that's what we're bringing <laughs> all the Chinese in. Bad joke. <laughs> Which one? Which Biden? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right, right. How about, how about that? How about, um, you know, the big, I think one of the bigger concerns in this whole like political race is, you know, you better be careful, man. If big Mike tries to come in, uh, um, <laughs> you know, we'll lose, man. If big Mike runs Michelle, big Mike. Oh, <laughs> big Mike. Now runs. see, if you'd have said Danny Glover, I'd have known immediately. Oh, you were oh man. About. That's what they call her on Twitter. Big Mike. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only social media I have left. <laughs> you know, Nancy Pelosi was basically telling, uh, Biden that he needs to gracefully step aside and allow her nephew to run for president. <laughs> well, that's like and you know who her nephew is, right? No. Gavin Newsom. Oh, uh, big surprise there. Who's nephew yeah. whose nephew is Gavin Newsom? Nancy, Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi. Oh. Pelosi. It, it's like the pot calling the kettle black, isn't it? You need to step aside. That's Hello, why Bill Nancy. Maher Bill Maher loves Gavin Newsom. I, 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 he I was does, watching man. a clip of him. I was watching a clip of him earlier getting eaten up over Gavin, New Gavin Newsom's record. And he's just like, oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. But he's a good guy. He's a good but guy you, and he speaks well. And if you look at Nancy Pelosi, um, no, thank I'm you. starting to think, I'm going to say uh, Michael Jackson is not dead. He's just <laughs> a transgender now. And drunk. Yeah. I could, the only no, way I, I would, the only way I would smash Nancy Pelosi is if I needed to complete my wings set and I was going for the blue ones, you know, on a dead woman. Uh, I would, but I would I, smash her with a sledgehammer. No, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to walk away. Let's walk away. <laughs> the only way I would do that is to complete the set, but I'm missing many, many other wings. Right. So that'll. Fortunately, I am a peon and she would have nothing to do with me anyway. So uh, I'm good. Okay. Deliver All you needed cream. was ice cream. If you got ice cream, still, still take it. Oh, God. Or just get on Grinder and hang out <laughs> around Paul Pelosi's office. <laughs> I, am a, I am Andy, a hammer salesman. Oh, shit. Well, come on in. <laughs> okay. We, we definitely got to change this topic. Gotta it's change this topic. <laughs> you got me on that one. Yeah. I'm going to go back to uh, your whole actor theory. And I want to pick but your brain your on uh, this actor. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> I want to, what are your thoughts on these um, crisis actors? Are they real? Are they something made up? Because I don't know. There's, there's some girl that keeps, she shows up at every crisis and yeah. every picture. My, my, well, I mean, my favorite crisis actor is David Hogg. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what I had in mind. When I brought that up, I say it all the time. David Hogg's my favorite crisis actor. I, and then people are like, oh, Sandy Hook happened. I said, I didn't say it didn't. I'm just saying he's my favorite crisis actor. Right. <laughs> exactly. And let's be clear. I'm not saying that any of these shootings didn't happen. I'm, not, I'm just saying he's my favorite crisis actor. He's still out there crying about that. Oh, yeah. Seven years later, making money off. Of but you yeah. see that you, if you do a little bit of research, you can go back and you can see, like Brian said, a lot of these same people yeah. are showing up. A lot up. of the guys. Yeah. Yeah, and, and this one girl in particular, I think I think I know who you're talking about. I, I don't know her name, obviously, but um, yeah, that's. I feel, I feel like it's just Jason Bateman in another movie. Because Jason yeah. Bateman, you know, he's he's in Ozark, he's in movies, he's uh, he was in Arrested Development, you know, Identity Theft, you know, all these type of 
movies and TV shows, and and I just like, oh, it's another Jason Baseman. It's it's uh, it really, really makes you really makes you wonder. Jason do they Bateman. mention why why Bateman? <laughs> do, do uh do they mention any of that in this this uh, documentary you want us to watch? Do uh, the documentary about- is is pretty serious, and once it gets going, and they start showing uh, ev- uh evidence. I mean, real evidence. This is wh- where we got this from. Uh, yeah. I mean, they even go go as far. So first of all, our Federal Reserve is broke. I mean, we got how many trillion in, in debt because they keep oh, printing man. money. James Rickard said that in, de- in in the death of the dollar, and he was never sued for this. Never. He so, quotes uh, Janet Yellen as saying the Fed is insolvent. So he whenever Trump went on his world tour, uh, they basically catered to him everywhere he went. And when he went to visit the Pope in Vatican City, uh, the Pope was not happy because the, the Vatican City was housing a lot of American gold. And it took 47 cargo planes to bring the American gold out of Vatican City back to America. I would expect the dollar is slowly dying and we will be going to the gold and silver exchange shortly. Wow. That is that is my prediction. That's a scary thought, man. What's well, funny because we th- through uh through rehypothecation, we've fucked up a British gold. Did you see about that? Texas and Brit- no. Britain asked for its gold back. Um Oh wow. Okay, okay. Uh, all right. I, I want to I, I don't I want to be sure I'm clear in my disclaimer. I don't remember all the details, so I will be general in what I say about this. This story involves the United States, Britain, and for some reason, Texas. But there is an act where we call rehypothecation, where we melt gold down, and then we reconstitute it. Take a little bit out and then reconstitute it, right? Like It's like cutting cocaine. It's cutting cocaine mm-hmm. only for gold. It's called rehypothecation. The Brits were like, uh, what the fuck? Um, we gave it to you at 99 and you're trying to give it back at 94.2. It was like something like that. Like, like we rehypothecated their shit, their shit so much. I'm trying, and I'm trying to know if this is correct or not that we had to tell that they had to tell Texas, you can't have your gold back. (laughs) Or it was like one or the other. It was like one or the other, but, but look up rehypothecation, Britain asking for gold back and Texas asking for its gold back. And you'll see what happened and you'll learn all about rehypothecation and that kid bill becomes a law (laughs) i mean and now you know and even uh, along the money lines i mean look at what's (laughs) going on with russia uh china brazil south america the BRICS program i mean they're trying to establish itself as the worldwide currency and there's a reason for that because the federal reserve dollar is not worth anything because all it is is worth on the faith of the of our military and with biden and obama slowly making our military weaker and weaker that dollar is worth less and less because our dollar is just a pace based upon the faith of our military right yeah and it, they, they were talking about that with um with putin uh uh and the and the dollar um you know they just put 50 sanctions in against putin right and and other people and then you, you remember we seized a lot of the oligarchs cash right some of those oligarchs had nothing to do with ukraine right? Um, right but but at the end of the day we we seized their cash right so you had a lot of people around the world going uh okay you know what um if if my possessing the dollar my ability to spend the dollar depends on my loyalty to whoever's in the government at this point in time i i'm going to try to offload my dollars so he said there was a large foreign offloading recently um well, well well you know that happened what today he announced it today so i think they're off i think they're seeing it so our, wow. our federal reserve is actually owned by a private company in britain yes. yeah and, and uh we're so donald company. Donald Trump is trying to have the U.S. Treasury take over and take the Federal Reserve out of commission. So that's going on. But if you look at the Democrats, you know, they, they, they rigged the election. They've trashed them as much as possible. They, they've tried to take them out of the election with uh, the court cases. 
And so they've done just about everything. And every time they do something, he gets more and more popular. The only yeah, thing yeah. left that the other side has left in their in their wheelhouse is assassination. Well, let me that, ask you do, do you think do you think they don't know every time they do something to him, he gets more popular? Oh, I think they know, but but you know, yeah. yeah. See, I think they know too, and I think their polling is a lot different than what they're telling us. I've said thoughts, that before on here. Yeah, my my thoughts is um I don't think he stands a snowball's chance of hell in hell of getting back into office. And I say that whether it's by hook or by crook, whether they jail him, whether he gets Hillaried, whether, you know, they just take him out, whatever the case may be. I, I don't see it happening. Well, Obama said it best. It's not the votes that counts. It's who counts the votes that count. Mm -hmm. And that's what Obama said. And, uh, you know, they just caught Hillary off guard. That's what happened. The number, well, here, number, I, the number. I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I, I I agree with you, sir. And and um, w one thing I was I was looking at, and this was an interesting um analysis I heard from someone else. Steve Dace, um, was talking about this. It wouldn't have been possible to steal the election the way they did, and he is a firm believer it was stolen. But what they did was they stole it within the within what he called the margin of cheating. That be, that that because there were so many um, uh, negatives on Trump, that it was believable to people who were iffy on him. Like, yeah, it's possible. Eighty-one million votes, you know. So there's a large portion of the population that struggles to to believe it because he, they stole it within the margin of cheating. And, and his whole point to that was Trump needs to control his messaging better and control the, 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 well, the messaging. He can't help I, it. I watched a little movie last weekend called the Trump's insults. And you know what? I thoroughly enjoyed that entire movie. Mm -hmm. It was basically how he took out everybody through his words and, and uh, insults of them. Yeah, and how they? Yeah, they, I, I mean, they, I think the dude is a—he's comedic gold. Yeah, he's hilarious. I'll, I'll tell you, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what I don't like about him, Andy, and I've told you this before. Um, I don't like civil asset forfeiture. I think it's completely un-American, and I don't like um, eminent domain. I think that's un-American too, and he's for both of those. Um, yeah, and I don't like that he still freaking runs around saying he deserves more credit for that goddamn vaccine. <laughs> okay, I still can't understand why he is on every show saying he deserves more credit for the vaccine. I mean, to me, that says he'll do it again. He will do so, it again to me. So when you watch the movie, they talk about COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And most of the vaccines were just nothing more than saline solution. Okay. Okay. So he's going to federally mandate I get saline solution again? Exactly. And then, and then when they talk <laughs> about when he talks about it, the 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 uh, um, COVID was from China, he's not talking about the country China. He's talking about the lab that has a hyphenated name from Yugoslavia. That's China, and that's why Joe Biden and Obama invested so much money in. Uh, in the Ukraine is because those biological labs are in the Ukraine. And the reason why Putin has attacked the Ukraine is because of those biological labs that are there. See, I, I thought, I thought, I thought that the reason he attacked Ukraine was because he said that if Ukraine is admitted into NATO, that is an absolute red line in the sand. And two weeks before he invaded, Biden sent Kamala Harris over to invite Ukraine into NATO. Like we, prov we, prov we, Biden, Biden provoked Putin into so, that because he knew Putin didn't want nukes on his border. But if, if, if Ukraine has all these biological warfare labs. Yeah. And they go into NATO. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like he put, yeah. he, he pushed Putin into the war. Biden pushed him into war by by sending by sending 
Kamala Harris to Ukraine to give a speech formally inviting them to the UN or saying that the US supports them uh, applying for membership in the UN. Putin said that is a line in the sand. If if yeah. they go to, to NATO because he doesn't want nukes on his border. And you know okay. what? I would hope if China makes an agreement with Mexico, we do the same thing. <laughs> I would mm -hmm. hope we invade Mexico. If if China tries to put nukes on our fucking border too, you know? Or my right? so so was that is that just the public narrative? I, I mean, with, with what Brian's saying, I mean, I it makes sense to me. Well, my thing is though is it doesn't square though. I mean, Trump is out there saying, you know, yeah, and I'd do it again, and and I don't get that. I don't get that. And then and then we'll, we like here's what I don't get. A good friend of mine, huge Trump supporter, right? I'm voting Trump. I'm voting Trump because I'm voting against Biden, right? Um, but huge Trump supporter friend of mine. Um, we're talking about the, the vaccines, you know, Hey, you know, if you got a vaccine, are you stupid? You're stupid. Right. I said, well, so what about Trump promoting it? Oh, well, uh, you know, um, he was lied to. I was like, okay, you think, you think he doesn't know that? I mean, I know that he knows that, but he's still running around saying, I want more credit. But and the greatest show on earth. I can't wait it, to watch it. I can't wait for you to watch it either. It's almost what you said. It's like, let's get off here and want go watch it again. <laughs> I've already watched it four times. Right. And everybody that I've well, what do they say for that, that he keeps pushing for the vaccines? I mean, I don't understand. I, I guess what I'm saying is it sounds to me like if there was another pandemic, he would be totally OK with us locking down for two weeks to slow the spread. Again. No, that's that won't be the case. Just watch the show. OK, write it will down. I be forced. Will I be forced to take a vaccine? No. OK, no. will he will he open up? for uh, lawsuits against these vaccine uh, injured people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and let's talk about Hawaii. Remember Hawaii burnt down? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's 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 some new weaponry, by the way. It's amazing mm -hmm. how everything that was a certain color blue was not burnt up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. That's one of those Dr. Evil, a laser, <laughs> laser. <laughs> Well, and, and and that was a land grab because they immediately declared it all a national disaster and then a park. Like, yeah. like it's all been declared a park now. So you, no one can rebuild. They can't do anything. And no one's helping to rebuild and no one's doing it. it everybody's gone. And, and there's no way all of that would have burned down without a laser. <laughs> I feel need. like I should be doing this. <laughs> Stop humping the giant laser. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah i'm i'm uh my curiosity is peaked to the max right now i'm, I'm chomping at the bit you but, know uh, if i wasn't a, a a q member but man i i'm starting to want to be because they seem uh -huh. like everything they put out comes out as a conspiracy uh theory to most but then it's it's like foreshadowing for others and it's amazing yeah. how much they how much they put out that come true i mean it's it's it, i mean they're better than the simpsons at predicting uh <laughs> the future the difference between conspiracy and fact is what six months yeah <laughs> thereabouts <laughs> and then and and technology is just the opposite way you when you buy it it's already obsolete have you guys seen that have you guys seen the the do you guys hear about what happened with google yesterday google's ai no you don't know anything about google's new ai no, everything everything is woke Oh man. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. God. Do you know about it though? Yeah. George Washington is actually black. Yes. It won't produce white people. So what? like they were, yes, yes. You cannot be white on the Google new AI. So, <laughs> so they were asking, uh, uh, they were asking the AI, right? I forget his name, right? It's like Ax Axel or something. Um, but, uh, they were asking it to uh, give me pictures of, um, of crusaders. Right. And it was like black people on horses and like night gear and like robes i'm not saying black people didn't crusade or be slaves or whatever but then, then they asked like 18th century kings and they were like okay it's not what you think of when you think of crusaders right when you think of a crusader you don't think of that um so then they said okay give us the kings then because we know who the kings are so they asked it for the kings and they were all and uh it was a it gave a depiction a white a white male a black female in a crown and a robe uh, yeah, yeah, like like a mixed race Asian what? in a black like in a crown and 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 that was 18th century European kings. Did anybody think to ask it uh, what color were slaves? They, so so, well, so slaves slaves come in all different colors. 
So they started asking it, give me 18th century kings eating watermelon for a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Give me, oh, give me Nazis. They were all black. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, we have slavery in in America, and and unfortunately, the color is green, because yeah. Yeah. most of America is in debt. Yep. As my friend would say, we're all on the plantation, Lewis. We're all on the plantation. <laughs> uh, you know, he used to say it. To Andre used to say it all the time. Lewis, we're all on the plant. And as and as Andy knows, he's a card carrier. <laughs> he can say it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Hey, yep. That dude's got wise, wise things. We should get him on the show. Sometime. I, he said he would. He said he would, but uh, he uh, um, he said he wants to retire first. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fair. Said, okay. That's fair. That's worth but, uh, waiting for. Yeah, he's a good friend of ours. Uh, he's he's been with. I've known him since uh, the nineties, uh, Brian. This gentleman went to Japan in nineteen eighty four. Got stationed there, and then has wow. never, and then only returned um, three times. I think that I'm aware of. He returned. Um, he just stays there living. Damn. So in 84, I was a sophomore in high school, and I marched in the uh, Orange Bowl Parade. Yeah. Oh, wow. You, you'll, you'll, you'll like him. He's uh, uh, he's he's our good friend. He's African-American, right? And uh, or, or he would say he was black. He'd say he yeah, was black. Yeah, black. He's black. He's and, black. Um, very, very um, not, I, don't, I don't know if he, I not necessarily conservative, but uh, very, uh, um, I know what I believe. And, um, and, and very on to the lies. And I, and I asked him one time, you know, like, would you ever go back? And uh, he was like, Oh no, no, no. And I said, why not? He goes, Oh, because I, I, I you know, when I go back, you know, I just, I, I feel like I'm getting fucked. He goes, I just feel like... <laughs> he goes, but here he goes, I don't know enough of the language, man. I could be getting it tomorrow, but I have no idea. <laughs> He's like, they might be doing it to me right now. He goes, but he goes, but when I'm in America, I know they're watching. I know they're listening. I know they're spying on us. I know they just, you know, he's like, I know it's grimy. He goes, he, he goes here. I don't, I don't know enough language. And, and he's fluent, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, we've been, I've, it, this guy's fluent, man. He's owned businesses over there. He opened two bars. Um, and, uh, but yeah, he's like, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, they could be oppressing me, but it just doesn't feel that way here. Cause I don't, I'm not a native. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, let's shift gears a little bit because you brought this up earlier, Brian. We were talking about the, uh, well, let's talk local. Let's talk about the drama in, in Missouri. What's happening in our state? Um, well, uh, we have uh, the, I mean, I don't even want to call them rhinos because that's not what they are. I mean, they're, um, we, we got the freedom fighters. And, and you know, one, one thing about the Republicans is every, every Republican's like, I'm a conservative. <laughs> Well, well, it's like that, that word is, is obsolete now. It's like, you're either a patriot or not. Hmm. And, and, and it's getting to that point. Um, we have one group that just wants liberty and freedom and, and then that's part of the Republican power. And then the other part of the Republican powers are just Democrats. And then the actual Democrats are more like socialists. So, um, they, are. Uh, I don't think anything's going to be done in the Missouri assembly this year, which is not a bad thing. Gridlock is not a bad thing because if they're passing more laws, uh, that's exactly what we don't need. Um, but yeah, they, 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 uh, the main argument is IP reform and that means initiative petition in the state of Missouri. Uh, Anybody outside the state of Missouri can, that has a couple of million dollars laying around can hire people to go grab signatures on a topic. They pay uh, $3 per signature. And if you get so many signatures, you can put something on the ballot for a constitutional change. And of course, they talk about voter candy. Um, where they just use things that everybody will agree with as voter candy, but no one reads the bill. So all the nasty stuff is behind the voter candy. And we pass it at 50% plus one person. And that's a permanent change of our Missouri constitution. So IP reform is to change it to uh, four, four sevenths, which is roughly 55% of the vote has to come in in order to change your constitution. That's the big fight in, in Jefferson city this year. Oh boy. Yeah, I agree with you. It, sometimes uh, nothing passed is a good thing for sure. Um, 
But, you know, it it should not be mob rule to change the Missouri Constitution, and it should not be led by forces outside of the state of Missouri. Concur. Uh, I I would argue on a national level, we are already in a civil war. It's it's just a non-shooting civil war. There's so much division, uh, so much fighting. And like I was telling Lou, it's it's both parties are guilty of this. It's party over country, which it shouldn't be at all. It should always be country over everything else. But, well, the difference is the Democrats, they lock arms. It doesn't matter what they do. They always lock arms and vote as a block. And the Republicans have too much infighting to blow, vote to make a difference. Yeah, I say uh, just um, they should just get rid of both parties. Never happened, but you know, I I can live in my ideal world and talk to the voices in my head all I want. Correct, but (laughs) we'll always have we'll always have the yes people and we'll always have the no people. So we'll always have two parties whenever you vote on anything. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, you know I I, I'll tell you I'm not a um I'm not you know I'm not like a Cheeto Jesus saved, but man I can't understand never Trumpers either though you know like I can't understand that like. Oh, I'll never like, wait, so you, so you want more? Wait, yeah, am I hearing you correctly? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I don't get that, man. I mean, I get Democrats hating them. Okay, cool. I got that. You know, we're, we're opposite parties that we're supposed to be. Um, But I, I don't understand the never Trumpers. And, I, and I'll tell you the, the other thing I don't understand. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, Brian, is, you know, I feel like, man, if, if it's that important, that presidency like if like like if like if if people are on twitter talking about i'll kill myself or i'll move and and you know we've all seen the posts right if this person gets elected or that person gets elected man that's a problem with the office that's not a problem with the person okay that's not a problem with Don. i don't have a problem with donald trump i don't have a problem with joe biden i got a problem with the presidency having that kind of power i think that's a problem you know and if they, and if they kill themselves i'm, I'm just going to call it i mean this is terrible for me to say but it's like calling the herd Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, you know that. But I'm still waiting for Alec Baldwin to move out of the country, right? I mean, yeah. that, that guy how many right? people were supposed to go to Canada? Yeah, maybe the let maybe maybe Baldwin will get the death penalty for the rust stuff, huh? How about that? But one yeah, one yeah. thing that I learned is is the grass is not always greener on the other side, and 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 sometimes those people know it. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's very yeah. true. And you know, it's it's hard to to get out of your comfort zone of what you think is normal. You know. Um, and it's, it's hard to go and do your own research when you have everything at your fingertips and you're just listening to talking heads and talking points. But, uh, but if we allowed that office to gain too much power too, though, I mean, why is it so critical? I mean, it's in my opinion, I feel like, you know, if Joe Biden won the presidency, like, like, I feel like in 2020 when Joe Biden won, instead of me being like, oh, I should have been like, man, oh, it's gonna suck, you know? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> you know, because he can't really do much because we have a Congress, we have a court system. But do we and, really have a Congress? I mean, uh, what's the point? Of, what like, if, what's the point of Congress if if you just do executive orders? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like the presidency has too much power. I feel like I feel like that office just has is stolen too much power for itself, and I think both parties are guilty of it. You know, but we have a three branch. Legis- I mean, three three branches of government, and if one becomes too powerful, the other two have to step up and put it in its check. Yeah, I agree. That's but why they're I, not. You're ex- you agree the president say, is too powerful, though. I think it's getting too powerful. Would you agree with that? It is. However, the other two branches of government need to step up and say, "Oh, back up," because you're, we're going to put you in check. That's the whole po- point of checks and balances. Yeah, take but it won't. It's not, and it won't happen. Can you imagine if they threaten the president's budget? <laughs> I won't give the White House a budget. Screw you. <laughs> we haven't had a <laughs> The last time we had a budget was under Reagan. We haven't had a budget since then. Hey, do you, do you know uh, uh, the, the president has to pay for those dinners? Have you, have, you, have you guys read about that ever? No. Like like when they have state dinners, they pay for that. Like that has to come out of their paycheck. And uh one of the recent presidents, I forget, got in there and didn't know, man. It was kind of like like it was a problem. Like after the first <laughs> I was like, are you you know, I can't remember which one, but um that's where I read about it first. And then I um 
uh, I, I talk a lot about the George Stephanopoulos, Stephanopoulos book. And um, somebody reminded me that that was in there too, that they paid for the dinner. Like he talked about them paying for the dinners. But um, there's loopholes to everything. And what they do now in Washington, D.C., when, when a lobbyist or something happens um, where there's a dinner involved, yeah. everything is, is chef cut and, and it comes out on toothpicks. So if it's a toothpick, it's not a dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's an hors d'oeuvre. So you, so you get your steak chopped up already for you in bite-sized pieces with toothpicks. <laughs> yeah. So, so here's a hot tip for all you uh, active duty who may go TAD. The new Yucusca Hotel will charge. Uh, uh, you can watch uh, porn, order room service, and, uh, and you know, your room just happened to cost that much because the hotel was booked. They got those letters pre-printed at the desk. <laughs> well, well right now uh -oh. all the immigrants got the hotel it's that time gentlemen oh. it's that time brian for... always wonderful talking to you don't go make sure you don't go anywhere it's Watch time that for movie. Our, it's time for our veterans helping veterans segment a uh time honored tradition here on nothing's off the table not really but sounded good um, <laughs> what, what do you got for us tonight lou Man, I got I got a, I got a couple of good ones. Uh, um, well, I had a couple of good ones, and then I lost the page. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally slipped on the Pornhub, did you? Yeah, yeah right. I, I wish. <laughs> I, I, I wish um, that would that would have been a much better. Um, all right, where are we? Here we are. Do, 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 do. The Fisher House. Oh, that's an excellent one. One of my favorites. Love the Fisher House. Right, so there, are, there. Are, so the Fisher House, if you didn't know, is a, a location on um, hospital, ba um, where major commands are. Every major command has a Fisher House, um, usually around the hospitals, um, things like that. It's a, a place where uh, families can come and visit with wounded veterans, severely wounded veterans who maybe cannot travel due to their injuries or things like that. Um, the family gets to stay there for free, completely. Um, the house, uh, you know, is, is just like they're at a house, you know, it has all the amenities and everything and the families, uh, can, can live out of there, you know, and, um, months at a time. And, uh, and, you know, if you, if you were to visit the website, uh, the Fisher house, um, dot org, you would see, uh, the testimonials. I'm not, I'm not gonna read them to you. Um, because, you know, we, we know them working in the, uh, medical industry you encounter people, or, you know, you reach out to the Fisher house. It's, it's just an, it's, it's just, it's clean. It's, it's like home and they're able to visit and the therapeutic nature of those visits, you know, having family come to help severely wounded, uh, veterans who, who are recovering. Um, and it's, it's all services, right? Because it's not just, um, you know, war injuries and combat injuries, but people who get horrifically injured in these accidents and some of these aviation accidents that you see. Um, also terminally terminally ill terminally ill correct yes yeah that maybe are too sick to move and can't travel they'll bring the family um i had a couple experiences with that as well so thanks for pointing that out but just anyway it's an a1 service that um again these families wouldn't be able to uh have these types of therapeutic visits without it um take a look at it check it out for yourself um read the reviews um sure you'll be pleased but you know if you if, if you don't know where to park five bucks you know they could use it it's it's an amazing an amazing organization it's uh done so much for the you know not just the physical recovery but more importantly the mental aspect of recovery um so hats off to them for sure so lou can i give you one for next next time you do this yes check out camp hope it's in missouri uh it's it's a program that that deals with uh the same type of clientele as the Fisher House, but it allows them to have outdoor experiences uh, that will allow them to um, enjoy a, a, a normalcy of outdoors. Yeah, yeah, so, I'll check it out. We'll get them profiled for sure. And then, uh, and then, uh, I want to, I want to give a shout out. So uh, after uh, my time when politics was over, I went to Florida to start teaching. I, I took a sabbatical and taught one year in Florida which by the way, I'm 2023 state teacher of the year for the state of Florida. Whoop, whoop. I had a, 
Yeah, well, well, got to throw that in there. And so I, I got really active with the VFW post 10095. And I want to give them a shout out because they are bringing the healing wall to Nassau County. First time the healing wall has been south of the Georgia line into Florida uh, to allow those veterans there near Jacksonville, north of Jacksonville, Florida, uh, a chance to uh, um, put some closure to some issues uh, that that war and, and serving in the military brings. So congratulations, okay. BFW Post 10095 in uh, Nassau County. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Brian, I'd like to thank you very much for coming on. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Um, you're a wealth of knowledge, even if you look like Grizzly Adams right now. Uh, I'm a rich homeless person. <laughs> well, you know what? It's, it's funny you say that because, you know, I'm thinking there's some homeless people out there probably richer than we are. Maybe not Don't monetarily. but I have $22 to my name right now. Nice. So you no, got that not, going for you. You're not, you're, not, you're not homeless. You're what, unhoused? The yeah. term. what the hell are you <laughs> you're not homeless though don't how dare you right <laughs> i'm <again>. skyline um, <laughs> shame on you I have a bountiful skyline. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's he's of the bountiful skyline tribe <laughs> <laughs> When he was in Florida, he had beachfront property. <laughs> well, you know, I only went to, to the beach one time, even though my classroom, which uh, is unlike Missouri classrooms, my uh, classroom door opens to the outside. Um, I could see on a super clear day, the Atlantic Ocean, which was seven miles away. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So it was nice. We're actually going to go to Pensacola for spring break. Hey, end this thing. I got a dirty story to tell. Oh, all right. Well, uh, hey. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Comment, click, like down below.